Hello and welcome to part four video, derivation of the hypocycloid equation in terms of x and y. In my magic marble video, which is listed below, we talked about high speed travel from New York to San Francisco. In doing so, we used Isaac Newton's equation to determine the time and velocity required to travel between the cities. I listed my margin marble video below. To arrive at a more accurate time and velocity required, we need the same type equation, but with a slight deviation in construction of the equation. This derivation is quite difficult, so you won't find these derivations on the internet. I'm going to perform these derivations right here, starting in this video. These derivations are quite long and tedious, so I'll have to split them up into several videos. As stated previously, we will consider a hypocycloid, a smaller circle rolling inside the radius inside the Earth and carving out a tunnel, and how gravity affects travel inside this tunnel. This tunnel inside the Earth causes the value of gravity to vary, so we have to restructure Isaac Newton's equation. This is the equation Isaac Newton derived in 1697 to solve the brachistochrome problem given by Johann Bernoulli. Solutions of these type problems led to the development of the calculus, calculus of variation. Let's get started. In this diagram, we have the smaller circle is rolling inside of the larger circle in a counterclockwise direction. We are tracking the movement of point G to a new position at point C1 as the smaller circle rolls inside of the larger circle. The radius of the larger circle equals A, right here, and the radius of the smaller circle is equal to B. The radius O, W, equals A minus B, and the radius WC, WG, w, excuse me, WC, WC1 is equal to B. Let's continue. Let's locate point C1 from G to C1 in the X direction. We have X is equal to a minus b cosine theta plus b cosine phi. That's the x direction from zero to there. From g to c1 in y direction, we have a minus b, y is equal to a minus b times sine theta, and that's to w, and w is on the same line as y, minus b sine phi. Let's continue. Now, I've drawn these three triangles out here. So we have theta and we have phi, theta and phi. A minus B cosine theta is X direction plus B cosine phi. So we locate C1. Y equals to A minus B sine theta, A minus B sine theta minus B sine phi. So that's how we locate C1. We use minus b sine phi because to locate c1 and y, we went up from 0 to L with a minus sine theta, a minus b sine theta. Then we minus b sine phi to come down to c1, to come down to c1. I want you to know why that minus sign was there. Let's continue. So we have our hypocycloid in terms of angle 
theta and in terms of angle phi. We need to determine, get it in terms of one angle. So S equals arc length. So we have the arc length of A equals the arc length of B. So that the arc length of A is equal to A minus B theta, A minus B theta. And the arc length of B is equal to B sine phi. And since they're equal, we can put them equal to each other. And we get phi is equal to A minus B times theta divided by B. And since our X is equal to A minus B cosine theta plus B times cosine phi, we can substitute phi inside there. And Y, we have the sine phi there. We can substitute phi inside of there. Let's continue. Here's our previous equation. Let's let k equal a minus b divided by b, where k is equal a minus b divided by b, and phi is equal to a minus b divided by b theta. Well, we substitute k into there, and finally our hypercycloid in terms of x and y is equal to a minus b cosine theta, plus b times cosine k theta. And y is equal to a minus b sine theta minus b times sine k theta. So now we have both of our equations in terms of x and y and in terms of theta. Let's continue. Okay, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you that uh, that equation essentially draws a hypercycloid. So what I've done is I've manipulated that equation where I have x and y here. So as you can see, x is zero because it's right there. Circle is zero and y is three fourths sine t minus one fourth sine three t and k is three. Okay. I just manipulated this a little bit to make it draw one hypocycloid. So uh Let's uh, start this out. So it's and as you see, it's going to move back and forth. I remove I move the circle here, but that's the end of it. That's the uh, the point we're tracking. Okay, so I have another program here called large R twenty, small R five. And we got k equals three. What we have large r we call it a, and uh, small r we call it b. Okay, so we had k equals r large capital R minus small r divided by small r, and our and when we derived this equation, we had a minus b divided by b. Okay, so I just manipulated this a little bit, but uh, let's see how we can uh, start this to uh, generate the hypocycloid. As you can see, it's generating the four hypocycloids. You can make it generate as many as you choose. But I want to show you that the program that we derive essentially does uh, generate hypercycle. And here you can see, uh, X equal R K cosine theta plus R cosine K theta and X equal R K sine theta minus R K theta. And then I put an R there because we have an R in the denominator. So essentially that's R minus capital R minus small r. But you can take these equations and manipulate them any way you choose. 
Vamos ver o que vocês querem. Ok. Well, that's it for this part four video. Derivation of the hypercycloid equation in terms of x and y. It's not magic, it's the law. In our next video, part five, we derive the hypercycloid arc length, but we will, we will need the results of this video in Isaac Newton's equation to accomplish this. Until next time, I hope you learned something.